Welcome everyone, we're here at InfoSec World with Jonathan Sander from Stealth Bits Technologies. He's gonna talk about security philosophy. So we're gonna ask you some uh, kind of interesting questions that, uh, and you are now up. Uh, you seem so enthused, uh, kind of interesting. They're kind of like interesting, but I think the interesting part is you're a philosophy that's right. Major, but did you major in philosophy? Yeah, no, I, so yeah, technically I hold two degrees in philosophy. Um, with a con one in concentration in continental, which is like all the existentialism stuff people think about. Sartre, Camus, Nietzsche. Oh, exactly. sorry. I'm and sleeping already. The, the other is <laughs> cognitive science, which is actually more philosophy of science based. Involves mathematics, neurology. Um, really? <laughs> Come on. That one you should be interested in. But all right, that's fine. That's fine. So yes is the short answer to your question. Okay, so does compliance hinder or enhance security and why? Ooh. Since well, your company that you work for today mm -hmm. is uh, some of very compliance driven. Um, so yeah, a lot of the projects that we get involved with, the budget comes from mm -hmm. the compliance side. Right. But it's often the security people driving the actual project, which is the first thing I was going to say. I mean, like, you know, it enhances the security budget, mm, that's for sure. Right, a lot of people right. use compliance drivers to enhance the security budget. Um, but I think a lot of times the mentality on the philosophical side, it erodes the right mentality for doing security well, mm -hmm. right? Because people start thinking in terms of checklists instead of being nimble and actually dealing with the world as it's coming to you. Correct, yeah. And that, that's So that's not even dangerous. so much good enough, just changing their perception exactly. in a lot of different, because a lot of yeah. people say, oh, well, compliance, yeah, people just think it's good enough, but it's deeper than that. Yeah, and yeah. You, get the, you get events like the board will look at a CEO and say, you told me we were PCI compliant, how did we get hacked? Yeah, yeah. And like, they, 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 they connect these concepts that are completely divergent. Correct. And, and, and that's harmful, right? But done well, if you communicate it well, it could be okay. Um, what is the most common trait among organizations that have suffered a security breach? Uh, once, bitten, yeah. once bitten, twice shy. Um, wow. Well, I mean, human beings always react strongly in the moment to whatever comes at them, right? So, somebody who's been hacked for the first, for the following six months, they become hypersensitive. They're probably going to buy a lot of software, um, you know, which can be good for software companies, maybe not right. great for them in the long run, for security program, right? Because right. they actually, the security program onboards a whole bunch of technology that maybe they don't use well, right? Or maybe deploy at all. Um, I, I think they get a little bit of instant um, PST, P, P, PTSD spike, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but unfortunately, they forget about it after time, which is, you know, the typical human reaction, right? Big and then, right. you know, tapers off over time. Right? That's, it. Oh, that's an interesting comment, trait is that hypersensitive and then like back to, you know, back to some level, maybe not where they were before, but some level. Uh, I'm gonna do P90X, like I dropped 40 pounds, mm -hmm. I'm gonna eat Doritos every day again a month uh, later. Oh. Like, you know, like, yeah, like this is, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, exactly. that's human, right? Um, what can we do to make certain security is a consideration when implementing a new product or bringing in uh, what was the new, beginning of that question again? Uh, what can we do to make certain security is a consideration ah, okay. when implementing a new project, I should say, like in your IT organization? Well, I mean, that's easy, right? Invite the security people to the table. And, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, the, the classic security problem, you know, perceived as the no person, and so they're not invited to the projects um, at the early stages to give their advice. Um, if if you, I mean, the way the question is phrased is, I am a guy who's about to start a program. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a person who's got this pro project I need to do. What can I do to make security part of that? That's easy, invite the security person. Right. Easy, right? And they'll, they will bring that right perspective, right? But since this audience is probably more the security people, what can you do to make sure you're getting invited to those meetings, right? Is right. change the like perception. before there's a security issue. I think a lot of times right. people think, if it's your project, oh, security is just going to take care of security. We're not going to involve them. Right. If something happens with security, we have a security team to deal with it. That's, That's not right. how, obviously, security needs to work. I we, think we're, we need the security. We need the security people in organizations to shift from fire extinguisher to fire yes. alarm. Right. right? Like I want to. I want to install an alarm so that if something happens. And not, not to say that security is all about monitoring and alarming, it's purely an analogy, right? But the idea is that I want to be proactive and think about this ahead of time and make sure my program is wired up to have security as part of it instead of, 
oh my god, security has just harmed my program. Let me go get the fire extinguisher, i.e. security dude, to extinguish this problem that I probably could have prevented with better wiring up front. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Jonathan Sander, thank you very much. Well, thanks, Paul.